Hello, this is Brian. Today is Tuesday, June 6, 2023, and I'm here in Terra Santa, San Diego, not that far from Claremont Mesa Boulevard, a couple blocks away from it, and it's time for a spotlight on shrubs, and today is a very, very long-awaited episode for me to record, because today... I want to focus on this beautiful shrub right here. This is Chaparral Bush Mallow. This is Malacothamnus fasciculatus, variety fasciculatus. It is a small to medium sized evergreen or semi evergreen, sometimes might lose some foliage in drought, shrub in the mallow family, the Malvaceae. So what we have here is sometimes it's considered more of a subshrub because its woodiest tissue is near the base. And it's not a strongly woody shrub, but the size of it definitely becomes shrub sized. So what we have is often a sprawling and sometimes quite upright shrub. Sometimes multi-trunked, sometimes with a single trunk. I've seen both. Sometimes this shrub can be single trunk, like a miniature tree. So you have equal chances of seeing multi-trunked or single trunk specimens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with the really cool looking leaves, which are very gently lobed. And as you can see here, are alternate along the stem so they don't grow opposite each other so we've got one alternating here one alternating here and so forth so leaves are a nice medium green kind of bristly on top and on bottom almost the same color and like I said kind of bristly then we got these nice green stems that are very gently fuzzy or perberolent. And with the case of a lot of a lot of our natives, the leaves are much larger lower down on the stem than they are higher up on the stems. So let me go ahead and get a picture or two of the leaves and then we'll move on to some other features of this really cool plant. So, for the most part, once these shrubs get older, and they're not extremely long-lived shrubs, they may live for several years, maybe maybe a little bit more than a decade, I'm not sure exactly how long, but they're not really long-lived shrubs. And I'm going to explain partly why that is when we go further into detail about some of the ecological aspects of this quite lovely shrub. I want to take a look at the bark. These shrubs generally have a very smooth, kind of a smooth gray bark. If I can actually get in there, that would be pretty neat. But like I said, the you don't really get woody tissue till you get towards the base. And then we start getting a kind of a yellowish, grayish bark. It's pretty smooth. Let me see if I can wiggle my way in there. As you can see there. Pretty smooth, kind of grayish. Maybe some very light furrowing at the base of the older trunks. And then, of course, we also have to mention one of the much more visible aspects of this plant. The beautiful flowers on these plants. So, very fairly typical in shape to a plant in the Malvaceae, kind of a cupped corolla of petals. And then you get this raised area of anthers in the middle, kind of similar to, hibis to hibiscus plants. 
So they kind of look like smaller hibiscus flowers. And there's a reason why. And that's because they are related. Hibiscus is in the Malvaceae along with this lovely native here. So a lot of times the flowers are gonna be kind of cupped in profile with the petals kind of curling upward. But then sometimes they will open out a little flatter and you can actually see the petals kind of separated as you do on this one here. And we got a nice, it's a nice mellow whitish pink, sometimes whitish purplish pink. And then occasionally they get a little bit darker. But it's just a really pleasant looking plant when it's in bloom and typically we're looking at late spring through early summer. A nice chunk of the rest of the year the plant might look a little drab because it does grow in a winter wet summer dry climate but once we're in full bloom here in early june it's just an absolutely smack you in the face type of awesome sight it just hits you really hardcore so a lot of times these plants will be quite inconspicuous during the drier parts of the year and even during the rainy season you'll see lots of uh, shrubs that are green and with these lobed leaves and everything but once you get into the late spring blooms this is when you hit the zenith of the awesomeness that this plant has so I'm gonna go take a few pictures of the flowers of this plant and we'll talk about habitat and some of its e ecological aspects Before we start talking about its, its uh, environmental aspects, its ecological aspects, let's kind of mention a couple other things about the flowers that I kind of failed to mention in the previous segment. Now, as you notice here, a lot of times bush mallow flowers, and this is a good few to several species of malacothamnus, a good few of which are native here to Southern California, I believe Fasciculatus is the only species in this area. Well, I'll stick with that. But you'll notice that a lot of times, not only are they striking, but they are very numerous. So a lot of their striking, their striking, their striking aspects come from the beauty of the individual flowers, but also the immense amount of flowers these plants produce, especially when they're in good health, like this specimen here. Especially after we had a really really awesome rainy season but one thing about this plant is it lives up to its name fasciculatus because look at how the flowers are clustered you see how the buds are very well clustered here on the twigs and then they open up and then that's why these partially why these plants are so floriferous because they're fascicled bundled fasciculatus on the stem and then when they dry up the flowers dry up and they're pollinated they become these really small seed capsules here's an old become old seed capsules that'll open up and release the seeds now here's a really young plant right here it's already flowering probably a very young plant maybe even not even two years old so they do flower, a lot of times they'll flower when they're young. Uh, I said, don't expect these to live for decades and decades like a chemise and other chaparral shrubs. But, so what's the habitat for Malacothamnus? Well, where we are is kind of a mixed bag of native plants like California buckwheat, San Diego bush sunflower, toleon, lemonade sumac, and then, of course, also non-native plants like river red gum, eucalyptus, Aleppo pine, and so forth. These plants have quite an interesting niche of habitats. For the most part, you're going to be looking in A, disturbed sites, and B, coastal sage scrub. C, sometimes in open areas of chaparral. But a lot of times I will see this plant in coastal sage scrub, especially 
near trails and in more open sites. This plant kind of likes to be in the open. So another thing is a lot of these plants will colonize disturbed areas as I had mentioned. So that means they would also be pretty good at colonizing an area after fire. That type of disturbance is also a way to get this plant to colonize a site. And I've seen areas where this plant has colonized post-fire sites in mass. One place is Santiago Oaks Regional Park up in North Orange County near the 91 freeway, kind of up between Anaheim and Orange. Because that area has been ravaged by many fires over the last 20 plus years. And there'd be hiking trails where this plant is everywhere everywhere. You'll see it all over the place along some of the hiking trails at Santiago Oaks. And I'm pretty sure that after the 2017 fires, it very likely got even more insanely populous over there. So fire disturbance is a way to get this plant to come up in mass. And in some places that's been disturbed by fire in the last few years, this plant will sometimes be the dominant plant for a while and it's not a super long-lived plant but it is during it it basically comes up during the early succession of post-fire regrowth and rehabilitation by natural vegetation and of course that's not always the case this area hasn't been met by fire in a long time but again this is kind of a disturbed site next to a a little culvert here and some trail work over here but this plant does form an essential function during the early post-fire regrowth and what that means is they're one of the earlier plants to sprout after a fire and grow flower produce seed and a lot of times the soil will retain the seeds as the recovery plants come back as the coastal sage scrub or chaparral plants come back and these will eventually be shaded out and will eventually fade away and then the next fire comes through the seeds will sprout up and start a whole new population so it's pretty important to have these have these plants around because they help reestablish the regrowth of native species in an area. But a lot of times these will also be found with a lot of non-native plants as well as we're seeing here. Lots of non-native sunflowers and of course grasses and other plants as well but at least with this plant here it can, it can start a foothold for the regrowth process of post-fire plants. It's not a very, like I said, it's not a very long-lived shrub. But it can be locally quite common here in Southern California. It doesn't necessarily need fire to proliferate. But disturbance is usually the best way to get this plant to go. And fire tends to be the best disturbance for it to really take over. And it does make a very lovely garden plant. Used to our native climate rain in the winter, dry in the summer. I wouldn't recommend watering it too much in the summer unless you want the roots to rot. It may be a little later on during the flowering season, maybe to keep the flowering season a little bit longer, but once we get to the dead of summer, let it go partially dormant. And it, like I said, it might look, it might not look very luscious during the mid, late summer and fall months, but give it time to come back again in the spring and hopefully blow your mind with these beautiful flowers. I'm just going to get a couple more uh, pictures of this plant and we're going to con conclude this video. So yes, this plant can be pretty common here in Southern California from coast to mountain. And I'll post a more specific range of this plant here on the screen, if you look on the screen. And what a beautiful plant to have here 
related to a hibiscus. And hibiscus is a very common ornamental plant here in Southern California. However, we could replace some hibiscus with some of this. Our water bills would go down. Don't get it, don't get it wrong. I like our ornamental plants as well. But I mean, you can't go wrong with a beautiful native. This is kind of like a native hibiscus, even though it's not in the genus hibiscus. So there you have it. Chaparral bushmallow, Malacothamnus fasciculatus, variety fasciculatus. Here from Tirasana, near the Seda Nature Trail. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on my next spotlight.